All right, we are back for day two of Eco Gold Live-ish. Um, I'm here with the great Karen O'Connor. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. <laughs> if my fans make you nervous, I can ask them to leave. But <laughs> all three of them. <laughs> um, so we're going to start out with uh, the most important question: the jog outfit. Um, were you robbed with the uh, the best dressed? I think you know. Do you think that you should have been? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the hat really. I mean, it pulled it all together. Yeah. Well, I tried to uh, use the hat because my horse has. You know, he's got some black and white hairs on his left hip, mm. and so that sort of speckled, fre freckled kind of. Uh, I was going with that, brought, and brought, it a yeah, bit. and I brought that into the cowboy hat, and yeah. so it just to me it just completed the whole theme. It really did. You yeah, know, yeah. I, it brought a tear to our eyes. Exactly. The, I mean, the raincoat that was pretty outstanding, and yeah. then you know the cowboy gave a little bit of flair because on Saturday night I'm doing some raining activities yeah. with, the, with the cowboys, yeah. so should be exciting. Yeah. So I, yeah, I thought I was robbed. Uh, you yeah. were robbed. Yeah. Karen should have been best dressed by far. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad I had your vote. Anyway. <laughs> it makes me feel much better. Uh, so we're back at Rolex. You've been here one or two times before. Um, you just got back from England, feeling a little jet lagged. In one piece, you look. I uh, right. I was feeling a little jet lagged yesterday. I'm better today, but I think I'll be fully on board tomorrow morning. I uh, I have a question from a, a rider. Um, they want to talk about want you to talk about um, the atmosphere in the UK compared to um, the US. How does it differ? A lot of people don't make make it over there, and I was lucky enough to be over there for a year. It's 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 an intense. It's great over in the UK. How does the UK differ from being over here, competing over in the US? Uh, I also lived in England. Uh, Dave and I lived in there from 1991 till 1995, mm -hmm. so uh, a full solid five years, and uh, we learned a tremendous amount about how to, where the sport is, where the top of the game is mm -hmm. worldwide. There, at any given competition, it doesn't matter if it's novice or all the way up to badminton or burley, there are any number of countries from 14 to 25 different countries competing at the same competition and we're competing every weekend with the novice level horses all the way up to the advanced level horses um, so you really if you want to do well over there you have, you have to learn how to win mm -hmm. and it's it's as easy and as difficult in the same statement you have to be uh, in the low 20s in dressage, you have to go inside the time and you have to jump a clear show jumping. And it's that simple and then it becomes that difficult. Mm -hmm. And if you can take that uh, from that experience, it changed our careers. When we came back here uh, to the United States, uh, it was remarkable to both of us how how different the sport is here in terms of the depth of competition and the depth of, of talented riders with multiple horses that there is over in the UK. And do you think, um, you know, what, what do you think the size of our country, do you think that matters or is it more of a, a cultural thing over there that it's just more kind of streamlined in their day-to-day, -day, a little bit more? I, I think English sports in general, English equestrian sports in general are on the rise uh, here in the United States as they have been for several decades. But we're not talking about decades in England, we're talking about centuries. centuries yeah. And centuries of tradition of English riding that started with the fox hunting, it started with the, 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 the commoner's romance with royalty and the pageantry of um, the monarchy and the idea of, of, um, of fox hunting and, and jumping fences across country. And that's how people grew up over there. Uh, they didn't have any western riding there a <clears throat> hundred years ago so their western sports are on the rise right. because of how easy things are to um, have uh, you know multi um, international sports uh, so their western sports are on the rise and our english sports are on the rise so our western sports are far more because of our heritage and because of our um, history with the western horse and the cowboy mm -hmm. Makes sense, makes sense. Um, so we have a few questions from our, uh, your fans, not my fans, um, our online, fans. our fans, come yeah, on. come on. Um, what has been your biggest challenge? You've had a pretty successful career, I would say. Um, what comes to mind as your biggest challenge as a professional, as a leading professional in this sport? I think uh, having done this for 35 years or whatever as a professional, uh, it, it has given me a lot of perspective mm -hmm. and I've watched and been a part of the sport changing over over that time period. Yeah. Um, when I first started uh, the courses were very demanding for horses, uh, long courses. We were doing anywhere from 12 to 14 minute 
cross country courses, uh, championship courses were even longer. And, um, you know, we did the full long format. The dressage level was very poor, mm -hmm. and the show jumps were very uncomplicated. Uh, and it was really all about the cross country. <clears throat> the cross country courses back then, uh, you had to do quite a lot of brave riding because the ditches were very deep and mm -hmm. wide, the hedges were very high, uh, and it took a very, very brave horse. But not, didn't take a lot of technical skill. Mm -hmm. And now the dressage uh, is, it, it's, you know, getting competitive to a fourth level dressage horse. The show jumping is competitive against a meter 30 horse and <clears throat> in the show jumping world. And the cross country phase is getting so much more uh, built on technique and accuracy and rideability of the horse. And now you have to go very, very fast between the jumps because a lot of the jump questions we're having at the cluster areas uh, on the course are all about rideability, turning, staying on a line, jumping something very small, uh, skinny, narrow, jumping something that's narrow and very wide. And so the horses have to have skills that uh, are much more technical than they've ever been before. Mm -hmm. So do you think that it, as a sport it's more difficult now or do you think it was harder when it was bigger and wider and more about the... I, I think the horses are trained to a higher level mm -hmm. technically. Um, I don't think it's harder now than it was then because the game back then was difficult. Mm -hmm. If you took the same riders that were doing it back then, mm -hmm. it's very easy for the riders of today to say, oh, back then, they didn't know what, <laughs> it was so easy back then. Well, I'd, I'd have to say that I don't think it really was that much easier because we didn't have the, the wonderful instruction that we have now. Right. Um, and the game back then was hard to win. The game is hard to win now. If you took the riders from uh, the 60s and 70s, and brought them to today and said, this is the game, this is how you have to win, they would take that on. They yeah. would totally take that on. Uh, because I think an equestrian competitor that wants to win is going to find out how to beat the game. Yeah. So who, over the years, who has been your best horse? Who, who? Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's like picking your, your favorite child. <laughs> I don't know. Come on, everyone picks a favorite child. Yeah, everyone. <laughs> um, hmm. Different ones for different things? Very, kind of. very, very different. Of course, you know, in the most recent years, the the famous horse, the one that uh, got into the hearts of everyone was Teddy, mm -hmm. the pony. And that was a very, very special time for me and a special time for him and a, I think a special time for the sport and for uh, a horse that was able to cross into the mainstream public. Mm -hmm. uh, and they knew his name and they knew who he was and um, that was a really special time for everybody. So I'll never forget him and was really excited to be able to ride him around Rolex mm -hmm. on two different occasions. Yeah. Um, and the tragic side of uh, how he ended his life was very sudden and very hard for the sport to take. And I think that that's why so many hundreds of thousands of people mo mourned that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a big deal for everybody. He was a special horse. I was over in England when you had Teddy going and I worked for uh, a four-star rider. She rode at the levels in the 90s. and at the time she was doing kind of a pony sales importing um, from Ireland and because of Teddy I guarantee the sales were <laughs> through sure. the world everyone wanted the next Teddy sure. but you know he it was, was it he was, was very wrong. special very special so I wouldn't say that he was necessarily um, my favorite horse but he certainly is he's in that group of horses that made that short list yeah yeah for sure that's awesome um, and you have quite a few students quite a few talented students um, what do you think is an attribute um, for a young rider or a competitive adult amateur to to make it to be successful in this sport is it you know personality is it is it luck is it timing you know, what what makes a successful amateur rider? I mean there are a lot of virtues that that are going to make make a top rider uh, and the, the, the for me the biggest thing you have to have is perseverance you you have to have a work ethic that um, allows you to be patient and understand that this is a, an acquired skill that takes many 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 years to learn how to do it well and you have to enjoy the journey having said that there is a bit of luck involved a choice of horses a part of a luck uh, choosing the right uh, coaches almost a bit lucky in the beginning because of, of your level of knowledge um, and then uh, being able to wake up every day and not really think that you are getting up to do a job you're getting up to do a passion and if you're one of the few people in the world that are lucky enough to take a passion as a child and turn it into a profession and turn it into a sporting career uh, it, you're you're in less than one percent of of the people in the world that get to enjoy something like that 
Um, so I live a very, very privileged life. I have wonderful students. Um, you know, just Hannah Burnett and Olivia Luicano and Lauren Kiefer, and, um, and then and those are sort of the, the the students that we have now. You talk about the students that we have graduated from our programs. We've we've taught a lot of the the, new, the now up and coming great riders that are here that are going to be in the top ten at the end of this weekend. So we're very proud of that. They all carry uh, a similar willingness to not leave a stone unturned um, and just that day-to-day -day work ethic and try to understand how a horse thinks they're not a vehicle they're not a number they're not you know one of they're not an iPhone they're not a computer of any kind they are a living breathing animal that has has the same feelings that we have and you have to understand why they do what they do uh, and how they think in order to get them to understand what you want and for the two of you together as a partnership to enjoy the life that you have chosen for them.